Many of your Romanian fans might not know that you're currently living in the land of Dracula because of love. Do you like it here? Yes, I, I absolutely love it. Um, I moved here since a year already, and it was the Christmas of last year. And uh, I just discovered a nice city in Bucharest and then so many other places in, in Romania uh, with my fiancé. We were traveling around the country, mostly because of the COVID. We had no chance to go out the country, so we were, you know, trying to discover for me the um, different places here, like uh, Transylvania or even in the Black Sea coast. And it's wonderful. I'm very happy that I took the decision to move here because, mostly because, you know, I just um, fell in love uh, with my fiance and, and then I decided to move here. Um, and uh, and it's great because actually you know she's my manager she takes care of my business so we are doing our our job together and and it's a nice place to be and to live and it's a nice country nice people nice food definitely love it <laughs> some musicians think Romania is a dead end in terms of rock music opportunities how wrong are they very wrong. <laughs> I just discovered uh, in uh, Romania and in Bucharest there is a nice um, a rock fan base uh, in many other countries around that normally the artists and the bands they are not coming because they think there is no chances to, to, to develop a business around their rock music but they are very wrong and I just discovered not just Romania but Bulgaria for example. Uh, a, great rock fan base and the people like the music and they go to the shows and then they buy your music so so I think it's a nice chance to expand uh, the career of any artist to come to this kind of countries. As a fan of classic rock music, what it's like to play with some of your idols like Richie Blackmore and Adrian Vandenberg? Yeah, it's um, it's a kind of um, I always say it's a kind of a dream come true, you know. Like, uh, it's, I mean, someone realized like you are playing in the same stage and you are doing records and yeah, working in the studio and songwriting with all those guys you were, you know, admiring uh, in your childhood and in, in, in your teenaging, you know, like uh, Richie Blackmore, for example. Uh, I grew up listening to Deep Purple and Rainbow. Uh, my father, rest in peace, he showed me a lot of music from and albums from Deep Purple. And then suddenly you're rehearsing and you know getting dinner, taking a beer, playing music with with Richard Blackmore. So it's it's awesome, and I, I never imagined that could happen to me. Uh, so as I say, it's a kind of a it's a kind of a dream come true, and I feel very lucky to be part of this little part of their history. The story of how you joined Rainbow is exceptional. Tell us how it happened. Yeah, it's exceptional in every, <laughs> in every way. Uh, because I was just, you know, uh, like six years ago I was playing in a Rainbow cover band in Spain. Um, and we got uh, really successful. Uh, we were playing in some festivals and we were doing a you know local tour in Spain and and the people liked the band really much. So there were some videos on YouTube and suddenly at that time Richie and Candice they were they were thinking about to do some rainbow shows and they, they saw one of my videos on YouTube and they uh, they contacted me right away when they saw one of those videos and and I got a message early in the morning, I remember, from Candice and she was saying like, uh, uh, you know, Rich is thinking to do this and we saw one of your videos, we are impressed and we, we want to meet you and, and talk about the chance to, to work together. And, you know, I, I, I didn't believe it. And it was, it was unreal for me, uh, you know, just a, a local musician playing some music uh, as a hobby mostly and, and then suddenly your biggest idol is uh, texting you like he, he wants to work together so it's, it's, it was uh, amazing and then it, it took me like at least one month to realize that this is happening for real you know so, <laughs> so.
So yeah, it was it was amazing. Any rainbow plans soon? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we uh, we had some plans for the tour this year. Obviously, doesn't happen because of the COVID. Um, so uh, I guess they are just waiting for everything goes back to normal. Uh, you know, right now is a mess because everybody was postponing or canceling the shows this year. So everybody wants to play the shows next year. So there will be, if it's possible, there will be a lot of a lot of uh, shows coming in. So I think it's not a good idea to come out with uh, rainbow shows. Uh, and and then Richie and Candice they are really focused on the Blackmore's Night new album. Uh, so I guess once they're done with uh, with the Blackmore's Night promotion and tour, we gonna we're gonna have a meeting and to to um, try to put some shows together again. On a scale of one to one thousand, how much do you miss live shows? Well, I can say even ten thousand. <laughs> Uh, it's really missing. It's really missing. Uh, mostly for me because it was the last five years since I joined Rainbow uh, and many other projects after that because of Rainbow. Uh, I was touring a lot and I was traveling a lot around the world, not just Europe but even South America, Japan, and a lot of places, Russia. And um, um, yeah, I get used to it to be traveling and touring all the time. So when you need to stop, like we did this year, it was it was a kind of a shock, you know. Like there was no time to realize that you're not able to tour anymore, and then suddenly you realize that you are at home doing nothing, and and it's it's really hard to handle it and really miss it. And and I guess not, not just for the musicians, but for the fans too. They are not able to do. Uh, to go to any show and, and, and it's, it's a little bit sad either, so yeah, it's really miss it. What are your musical plans for 2021? Yeah, if, if everything uh, goes well and get back to normal, uh, as normal as is possible, right? Um, because we know that anything's gonna be really normal again. Uh, so if everything goes well, uh, I have a scheduled a tour already with the Rock Meets Classic uh, in Germany with um, uh, Joy Tempest from Europe and Dee Snyder from Twisted Sister uh, on April. Uh, then we're gonna make a tour with Intelligent Music Project in May around Europe too. Uh, then we have some festivals with uh, Michael Schenker, if those festivals happen at the end. Uh, and then the, the proper European tour with Michael Schenker on autumn fall 2021. It seems like everyone wants a piece of you. Lords of Black, Vandenberg, Rainbow, Michael Schenker, how do you manage to make them all work? Yeah, it's not that hard to handle it, you know, you just need to work with uh, with the right people, you, you need to have a strong and very professional team uh, behind you to make all the things, you know, as a puzzle uh, to work well. Um, to me it's really easy because I have my fiancé, she takes care of my business and she takes care of everything on the managing and my schedule. Probably she knows better than me what I need to do every day. <laughs> so, yeah. So to me, it's really easy and really helpful because I can be just focused on the on the on the artist side and not just in the business side. Um, and it's really easy because mostly the things that I do and the people that I work with, uh, they're very professional, uh, like uh, the, the Michael Schenker managing or Intelligent Music Project. They have a really strong, a good team. So we just keep communicating and you know like if they send a message there's no reply they call you know like we need to do this we're gonna do this and, and everything is good for everybody we just do it and, and that's it communication and, and, and to have a good team.
Many of the musicians you work with would like to have you exclusively just for them. Is there any chance you could stick to just one band? Is the business worth it nowadays to do it? Well, there is two elements and two factors that to me are very important uh, in any um, project that I get involved. The first one is the artistic and creative side. Uh, uh, in my case, it's my personal opinion, I need to be uh, busy with different things all the time. Uh, to me it will be very um, boring to be in just one band uh, doing just one kind of and one one kind of music and one just one style of music you know it will be very boring to play just heavy metal uh, because I grow up listening different kind of music different styles different singers different bands so mostly what I need is to uh, be um, involved in different uh, projects to have the chance to develop my performance uh, in different ways you know, that's why I have a heavy metal band like Lords of Black and I was uh, love to be involved with Corleone for example which is more hard, classic hard rock music and obviously with Rainbow because it's more classic rock and The Fairman which is more progressive uh, melodic heavy metal or now Sunstorm which is more AOR music more even more melodic than others and that keep me uh, very, uh, very busy mentally in my creative side. And the other side is uh, the other element is the is the business. Um, nowadays, uh, as the opposite that people can think, there is no uh, millionaire record labels, uh, millionaire uh, record deals anymore. So uh, to have to reach a certain point of uh, life. Uh, in comfort zone, you need to be busy with different things. Um, I know that some musicians they love when they say like, uh, we want to just in this bands because if you are in many bands, the people you know get a little bit, a little bit uh, um, boring or whatever. But uh, to me, it's really hard to be just in one band. Uh, mostly this year waiting for shows, waiting for albums and just in my couch and nobody's paying for that. <laughs> so um, exclusivity is not for free. If you want to have somebody uh, committed in an exclusive way, you need to pay for it and nobody's paying for that. Uh, everybody wants a piece of cake of you and everybody wants it for free. And, doesn't work in that way. You're also part of the Intelligent Music Project, which is a project with Bulgarian artists. What's next for the initiative? Yeah, this is this is one of those projects that I that I am very happy to be part of. Uh, I like it very much from the very beginning uh, when Dr. Milan Bravensky uh, he put in, in contact to me to to uh, talk about the chance to work together and I was really uh, impressed about uh, the music, the message that he put on the songs and, and, and as I said before, you know, he has a strong team working on the, on the project so uh, it's, 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 it's very funny, it's very uh, interesting, it's very nice to work together uh, probably is one of my favorite uh, projects that I I'm part of. Um, and yeah, uh, since we start to work together, we just realized that we have a strong connection and a good chemistry to working together. So uh, we are now trying to develop something else and not just to record an album and try to make some shows in Bulgaria, but to try to expand the project a little bit more. Uh, we just realized that the people like it. Um, you know, we just record an album. Uh, one year ago the album was out and we got a lot of successfuls in some countries with a single every time it got number one in some charts mostly in Greece and Bulgaria in the radios uh, in the mainstream radios which is very nice and now we're trying to to let more people to know the, about this music and about the message we're bringing 
So uh, the plan is to, um, we just record an album, a new album now. Uh, it's going to be released uh, at the beginning of 2021. Um, there is a video clip coming out very soon with the first single and we're planning to make a tour in May in some countries and ho hopefully uh, one of those shows is going to be in uh, Romania and Bucharest. We're just already uh, working on that and, and hopefully that's going to happen if everything goes well with the COVID. And, and, and for the moment, that's it. But we, we have, you know, like the goal and the achievement to, to make this uh, bigger. So, yeah, cool. Can you give us a spoiler about uh, what you're currently working on? <laughs> okay, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if there's any spoiler because I talk about, I talk about this before. But yeah, I'm working with. Um, with Lords of Black in the uh, in the second part of the new album Alchemy of Souls, so we're already working on the songs for Alchemy of Souls Part Two. The album which just uh, it was just released on November, so uh, the second part is going to be released next year. Uh, planning a possible tour, even if it's possible, and um, already working, starting to work on the ideas for the third Ferryman album with Magnus Carlsen and Mike Tirana. Um, uh, the news that came out this week that um, I'm working with uh, Sandstorm, which is, uh, uh, is recording uh, an album for the next year, it's going to be out in March. Uh, many plans with Intelligent Music Project um, for the next year. Uh, Mostly to have some shows, hopefully in Romania, that will be great. Uh, and then the tour with uh, Michael Schenker, and that's it by the moment. <laughs> Do you have a message for uh, your fans from Romania? Yeah, but I'm, uh, uh, I'm very happy to be, uh, to be here in Romania, to take the decisions to base my life uh, with my fiancé here. In Bucharest is a nice city, nice people, great food. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to to have the chance to play a show for the Romanian fans. I will love it. Hopefully next year that's gonna happen. Um, so hope to see you soon. That's it. Salut. Yeah.